Today's lesson was an introduction to organizing data. The goal was for them to come up with a bar graph, for them to organize data in that kind of a way. All right, I want you to look at the cereals here. I want you to choose one of those cereals, take a sticky note, write the name of the cereal that's your favorite on that sticky note, and then bring it up and put it on the board. Write the name of your favorite cereal up here. When you're finished, come place your sticky on the board. Place it securely. All right, has everyone placed their choice up on the board? Yes. It's hard for me to tell which ones are the most popular cereals. For instance, I'm not sure how many like Frosted Flakes. I'm not sure which ones like Cocoa Puffs the best. Talk to your groups about how we might organize this information in a way that we can clearly tell quickly what the favorite cereals are. So talk to your groups. How can we reorganize that information? We could put them in groups like honey nut cherries and fruit and frosted flakes. Serendipitously, we had breakfast cereal today, so that was kind of fun. So they were able to immediately have some connection to that. Very quickly, groups came up with lots of different ways to organize it, mostly just grouping it. All right, um, Debbie, would you like to come show us how your group might reorganize those ideas? So I'm seeing that Debbie's put some things into groups. So they're almost in rows. Raise your hand if your group had a similar idea. Similar. All right, now I want you to think of ways that we might make it even easier to read. So I want you to take your piece of paper, and I want you to use that piece of paper to write down what you think. How could you help us make something that would really be easy to see how to organize? When I'm walking around the room, I ask them, is it okay if, we sh if you share that? Are you comfortable sharing that? So it's not a surprise. They can sort of get used to it and so gather their thoughts. And I found that I've never had a student say no. They're proud of their work. And you can see how Umberto has his cereal organized and shaded in. Can we see right away which cereal has the most? Yeah. Right. Okay, this is called a bar graph. And this is exactly what I wanted to talk to you about today. So I'm going to leave his bar graph right here because I'm going to use it. Talk to your groups and tell your groups what you notice about this bar graph. What information, uh, how is the information represented in this bar graph? Talk to your groups about how that looks. I think the working together, um, especially with second language learners, helps them articulate their thoughts and kind of relaxes them a little bit. The pressure to perform on their own isn't as great. So I really like working in groups and working in pairs and, and kind of mixing that up a little bit. How did Umberto know what to shade in? Because it took, because right there, because so he could he counted it first, and then he, he did the sketch sheet, okay. and then he started shading it in it. That's how he knew how much had more. Well, let's look at what numbers he put here. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. They don't intuitively 12, 13, look at 14, the peripheral 15. information. So to building that graph by themselves from the ground up, um, they were able to see more of that. And even so, I had to point out some things that they didn't notice and things that are important when reading a graph. We have the numbers of students along the side here. That's correct. So we needed that so that we could keep track of votes. What else do we have, Jasmine? The name of the cereal. The name of the cereal. Is that important? Yes. 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 That's essential, isn't it? So, Honey Nut Cheerios has three. How am I going to show three on my bar, on my graph? You shaded it in all the way Good. I'm going to do it all the way to three. So, go up to my three. I can either shade it. I haven't drawn lines like Humberto did, but I can still bring it up to the three. Better. Okay, so there's my three. All right, very good. All right, I want to show you a couple uh, other graphs. I want you just to take a look at this. Don't talk about them. I want you to think to yourself, what do these graphs have in common? What is it like about these two graphs? All right, what do you see in common with these bar graphs? Cynthia. Um, well, 
they both have numbers? Good, they both have numbers. In the same place? Uh, no. No, they're in different places. But do they still represent numbers? Yeah. Okay, good. What else do you see that's in common? What else is like about these two bar graphs? Well, reading a graph is something that I oh, see difficult for oh. students, but I think it's because they don't look at all that information. They aren't, they're just kind of looking at the center. They aren't looking at the outside to see um, what else is there. What's this telling me? So does the title important to bar graph? Yeah. The title tells us what the data represents or what they're even looking at. And then the labels are important because we know now what pets they're even voting on. Do we have labels on our bar graph? Yes. What are some of the labels we have on our bar graph? Raise a quiet hand. Idalia? If someone was looking at this bar graph that wasn't in our classroom this morning, would they need to know what those numbers represent? Yes. So a label here is important. Yes or no? Yes. And have you look at one more set of graphs. This time I want you to pay attention to the labels and the title. Can you clearly see what data has been organized? what the data is about. So I have birthday of students by month. So on this side, it says number of students. And on the bottom, what do we have? The month. Could we do that with our class? So if you saw a bar graph now, could you easily be able to tell what it represents? Good. If I gave you some data, could you organize it into a bar graph? OK, we're going to do that. This is a survey taken at Alicante. I'm going to have you make a bar graph with the information about the kindergartners. Remember, it needs to have what at the top? At the top of my bar graph? Title. 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 We need a title. You can make up your own title for your bar graph. I want students to right. see that and there's not one right the answer. There's not one right approach. And, and they can see that with each other's work. 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. Sometimes I'll have students watch another student working, and that will be very powerful too. So it might spark a thought or um, get someone who's stuck go in, that di in a direction. So I think that's worked really well. Do you have to have the kinds of cereal along the bottom? Yes. Or can you have it along the side? One of the things that's hardest for me is to just wait. Just to let them think, let them draw, just let it go. And just let them kind of develop it on their own. And as what I've learned is as I do that, as I walk around, my lesson develops right along with it. I sort of know where I want to go next by what I'm watching happening. Um, but I think it is um, very powerful to have students have that space and time to work and think and talk to each other. Much more powerful than my just teaching from the front. And um, I think their retention is much better. Their depth of their learning is much greater. Good job, guys. You did a great job today with bar graphs.